All right, today's topic, we are gonna talk about erotic blueprints. There, there, there are five erotic blueprints. I'm in the car, it's raining. I have uh, my makeup artist and photographer, Christine, she's driving. <laughs> I won't point to her right now because I don't want us to die. No. Um, and so I will, I hope that right now, um, for all the sensual lovers out there, uh, you're getting sound, you're getting rain, you're getting all the things. So um, I really hope this audio comes through properly. Um, and I'm just, uh, again, passenger seat in the car. So let's start with the fact that understanding uh, what your partner needs and wants has a lot to do with knowing your erotic uh, blueprint. And there's five different um, sexual blueprints or what we'll call erotic blueprints. And I'm gonna go through each one of them. One is not better than the other. And there is a fifth bonus one that uh, some people might identify with, right? Not a, not a lot of people, but. So we'll start with uh, your energetic uh, blueprint. If you are somebody who identifies more as an energetic lover, um, and you prefer energetic sex, this is the kind of person that requires, uh, you know, safety in a relationship. Uh, you are, uh, you could be easily distracted if there are too many distractions uh, going on that's gonna impact your connection with your sexual partner. Because really think about, think about the word energetic, right? It's about the energy that you are sharing with another person in the bedroom. And uh, that energy is comprised of, uh, you know, primarily mental, obviously there's a mental connection here. There clearly is a physical connection, but it's really about that overall vibe, right? And safety is a big component of somebody who is an energetic lover because there has to be this element of trust between you and your partner in order for them to feel safe. Um, so the energetic lover, somebody with the energetic blueprint, um, really is in tune with their body, they're very much in tune with uh, their lover, and that um, undistracted connection, if they feel like you're in your head or you're not in the mood, mood is really, really important to that energetic lover. How can you implement um, things in the bedroom that are going to support an energetic lover? I, You know, having the right music is great, eliminating all distractions, uh, having uh, the mood set, uh, the appropriate foreplay. This is not somebody that's gonna get hot and horny like by touching them. It has to be uh, a combination of the lead up and again, that feeling of connection between you and your energetic uh, partner. The next uh, energetic erotic uh, blueprint is the sensual lover and when you think of sensual, think of senses, okay? So the sensual person enjoys being stimulated using all five senses. So we've got touch, we've got taste, we've got sound, we've got textile, and then we've got the, um, again, the, the emotional connection. So someone who's sensual enjoys, you know, soft touch, enjoys massage, enjoys, like this is the nine and a half weeks. Um, I feel like that was a really super sensual, a moment for those who are old enough to know the episode in nine and a half weeks where Sharon Stone and I think it's um, I forget the name of the actor now oh, uh, Mickey Rourke they're opening the fridge they are eating Is it uh, Sharon Stone? I think it was maybe it's not Sharon no, Stone No it's not Sharon Stone Okay else. Oh 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 Kim Kim Kim, Kim Basinger, Kim Basinger. Yeah. Oh my god this is so hot Google yeah. it uh, Kim Basinger and Mickey Rourke they're just oh it's such a sexy hot scene they, they're playing with food, there's music. She's got, I don't, I don't remember if she has clothes or a silky nightgown, but like the visual of, of your partner is important to a sensual lover. The eye contact, the kissing, the taste. This is where you're gonna wanna use um, uh, you know, edible oils, edible panties. Uh, it's possible that you wanna incorporate you know, fruits and food and vegetables and uh, oils, right, for the touch. I, a sensual lover could play with, oh, good foreplays if you buy those electronic devices where you can um, control the Bluetooth. stimulation. <laughs> Bluetooth! That's also going to come up in the next one. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, the sensual lover, just think of like creating an overall experience that is 
mind blowing, body blowing, and just like smell, scent, sounds. Wow, like that is what the sensual um, uh, blueprint, that's a recipe for success for somebody who has a sexual blueprint. Sensual blueprint. Next we're gonna go into kink, okay? So kink uh, typically are people who are really comfortable with like pushing the edge. Uh, things outside of the norm, uh, exploring boundaries, role playing, uh, in, it, it, it doesn't always have to be extreme, but extreme um, sex, extreme uh, fantasies, uh, threesomes, BDSM, fetishes, um, spanking, um, hardcore sex, they just wanna get to the climax, okay? It's really about touching the genitals. It's really about stimulating the mind, but really kink is, is kink is all about exploring the unknown, exploring the uh, taboo, you know, kink is taboo. People don't do that. You don't have sex with more than like two people. Like that's, uh, orgies would fall under that category, okay? Um, and then there is the sexual erotic blueprint, which you identify as a sexual lover. Uh, that is somebody that, it's not that you don't appreciate energetic or sensual, but you don't require that. You require the act of sex. You require to um, get off. You want to enjoy the act of sex and get right to it. Foreplay, I mean, you could probably have sex or a quickie anywhere, anytime, any place, and uh, it's just fine, you know? And this is not the person that wants to cuddle necessarily. I think after they have the climax and they have their um, release, now they can relax. But prior to that, it's all about the pursuit. It is this person's uh, goal is to have sex and that is the sexual person now the fifth uh, erotic and sexual blueprint is the shape shifter the shape shifter is the person like christine's like grinning here in the <laughs> corner she's like oh my god i'm very graphic here the shape shifter is somebody who has the capacity to be all of those and actually can uh, not, I, don't, I don't want to use the word conform. They can adapt to any sexual situation. They like it all. They like variety. They like cre creativity. They will push boundaries. They will be soft when they need to. They will be hard when they need to. They're gonna explore. It's a yes. Let's just say that it's a yes for the person who identifies as a shapeshifter. And of course, I'm talking in generalities, right? There are some people that are into kink that are only into specific kink. Maybe they're only into BDSM. Maybe they are the dom or they are the sub, or maybe they um, you know, are into poly, but only with women or only with men. Everybody still, regardless of this definition, uh, that's the uh, sort of, I, I would say, blueprint. Beyond that, the customization of what your lover wants and what they're comfortable with is all about conversation. Just because you identify as kink, it doesn't mean that somebody is willing to push the boundaries of kink or explore extreme situations or even participate in role play just because they're a king. And somebody who's sensual may think that the idea of food is disgusting in the bedroom and they won't let you, you know, uh, edible panties are like gross to them or not even gross, but it's just like, eh, let's, uh, let's use wine as the, um, you know, the aphrodisiac of choice rather than um, edible anything. So these are the things that you want to consider when it comes down to your erotic blueprint. If you're interested in knowing what your sexual blueprint is, um, I'm going to put the test here in this video so that you can take your test. And um, myself or Coach Neil, who, ex well, I want to say exposed, revealed the, these fantastic definitions to really help me with my single clients and also help me in identifying my style, which um, I know and relevant people will know, the relevant person will know. Um, it's great because now I can clearly communicate what I require, um, what turns me on, and also how to please uh, my partner um, in the sexual experience, right? So if you're interested in learning more of that, I'm gonna post a link here. I'm gonna to continue to talk about topics 
a lot about uh, sexuality, about sex, about healthy sex, 